Okay guys, so this is tutorial one. And with our tutorials, what I try to do is segment them into parts. Much because um, when I'm by myself here and I'm not in front of the classroom, a continuous dialogue can be difficult. The other thing is I uh, may have something I have to adjust on my computer and so on. Um, however, it just makes it easier for you guys as well. You watch a part, uh, you can try it on your computer, um, you can go back, replay, and so on. So uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, it's been, it's worked out so far by segmenting these into parts. And usually a tutorial in class will spend about an hour and a half doing a tutorial. That can be difficult when you're by yourself working on, um, you know, listening and watching and then going back and working on it. So I would say, you know, don't try to sit down and do an hour and a half or two hours worth of a tutorial all in one sitting. You may want to uh, try to do a couple parts, um, even each day, each evening, uh, work through it slowly. Just and, and honestly, be patient with yourselves with this. It is, um, it really actually isn't very difficult work. And with repetition comes uh, ease. But you do have to pay close attention to the tutorials, whether we're in class or doing it this way. And you have to really be careful to um, notice all of the steps that I take. Okay, so... We'll see how it goes, and um, we'll of course have time for questions during class. Okay, so you've opened InDesign, that's what you'll want to do. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just go through uh, a couple things in regard to the document setup. Now you guys know that um, if you have a computer, uh, you should be backing it up somehow. You're gonna be working on a lot of files in our class for sure and of course all your other classes that are going to become pretty important so I would say definitely have a way of backing up your computer regularly whether it's to a hard drive or if it's automatically backing up to the cloud and so on um, it it never fails that each term uh, a few computers will um, suddenly just stop working and work can be very quickly lost. And with our class, you're often putting in a few hours worth of work uh, over a couple days just to work on a project. You get absorbed into it, so uh, definitely be backing up. We'll talk about saving, we'll talk about what's called packaging your files, and um, then uh, that will cover you as far as being sure that you're, you have the files um, that you uh, that you need when you open the file again and of course you're saving as you go so in class I am always reminding you know just do command s after any really any function you do um, in order to make sure that things are saved as you go uh, I do talk a lot about the key commands otherwise known as hotkeys those become a very valuable way of using the software that we use um, just for efficiency, but also because a lot of what we do with these programs, them being creative programs, um, we do it in such a way that we control the program, not the, the program controlling us. It's a fine line between the program telling us what to do and how to use it and us really being able to use it fluidly and loosely like we would um, you know, a paint and a brush. We're using a creative program and we really want to have that ease and that fluidity of use. Okay, so first, we're going to go to, when you open up InDesign, you'll see the Create New um, or Open. Now, either way, you it, it depends on how you have your application set up. In the school, they're set up in a certain way. Uh, they default a lot on yours um, if you're working on your personal computer or if you're working on a computer that you've been loaned and so on typically it will maintain the settings that you have um, that you've set up the first time 
but there are a few things to watch for. So you can also access the new and open in the file menu. Now we're going to go to create new. We'll just click on that and that'll give us our new document. Now before I go through this quick uh, too much, I quickly want to explain what InDesign is. InDesign is a layout program. Um, layout being, uh, think of a magazine, a magazine spread for example. That's a layout. It has text, it has images. We're laying out the content and the imagery and so on. So where InDesign really shines is with multi-page um, heavy content, heavy typed content that needs formatting. If you do a, uh, a flyer, for example, you don't necessarily have to do a whole lot of text formatting. You'll have some text, you may have some small paragraphs, some titles, uh, logos, etc. And that's still a layout. However, InDesign is really meant to be multi-page um, and it's its strengths are in long documents. I typeset books and novels. Um, I work on a lot of annual reports, things that are multi-page like that. And of course, InDesign is what I use. That is not to say that you can't use it for a poster, a two-sided flyer, a business card even. It can do it all. But where it really shines is in really text-heavy formatting. So when you open it up, you can see here, we have a lot of options that show up. Um, you probably don't have much in your recent menu if you haven't used it. Uh, I do just because I use it pretty much daily. However, we're going to go to the print tab up here by new, the uh, top of the window where it says new document. And that will bring up, um, it, there's a lot of templates that it has. I would advise against using the templates immediately. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to learn the program. However, these can be handy when you're trying to um, start with something and make some revisions and uh, kind of put your own spin on it. Ideally though, you're getting parameters. Um, you're being given uh, settings, whether it's size and page number or anything that um, will indicate what your document size is going to be. So you're kind of, you need to know what those custom settings are. We're just going to start with a letter size document. And you're going to see a lot in these settings that is very unfamiliar at first. Um, the first thing is this 51P0. It says here that's the unit of measurements, picas. Picas is a print unit of measure. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. You don't, I, I'm going to um, let you know about it, of course, but you don't need to work in PICAs. You don't need to know what PICAs are. Uh, we will talk about that a bit in our typography lecture. However, um, PICAs are simply a unit of measure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this to inches. Graphic design typically happens working in inches. And I know the, the inch um, can, uh, you know, it's not something that we're in our country anyway, in Canada, we're no longer taught uh, by the imperial system or the standard system. Uh, we're taught by the metric system. So we work in inches and uh, we just, it can be a little difficult to understand how the inch works. I'm, um, I'm going to talk about that in this week's lecture just to give you an outline about it if you're unfamiliar with it. But it is, it is a quite simple unit of measure. So we're going to go to inches and a letter size paper is eight and a half by 11 inches. Uh, so we're going to set the orientation so orientation is portrait or landscape, portrait being taller than it is wide and landscape obviously being wider than it is tall. So we're going to maintain that portrait landscape just like a, a regular uh, letter. 
like a letterhead or a, a written letter and we'll go to pages we can leave that at one we're going to turn facing pages off for now and this is just our tutorial document that we're working on and the rest i will probably skip over some of these and that's because it's not because i'm uh, ignoring them it's because I don't want to give you information you don't need to know at this time um, the start number that's just saying what what page of your document everything that's automated is going to start at so you don't have to worry about that one is fine columns leave that alone column gutter leave that alone we're going to go right down to margins and Yours may or may not default to 0.5 inches. It likely will. And what the margins are, it's not like a Word document where when you set the margins, they're confining. You know, in a Word document, you set the margins and that's it. You can't work outside of those margins. They're very confining of your content. The margins in InDesign are primarily um, guides. They're a point of reference but you can and will work beyond them so we'll see how they show up on the page and then uh, bleed and slug so this isn't as bad as it sounds sounds kind of horrible bleed and slug but we're gonna open that and I'll talk about bleed uh, again this week in our in class two However, we are going to set the bleed on this. And before I talk about it, bleed is simply something that we have to uh, do what's called accounting for, account for bleed, um, and apply the bleed and so on on a page. It's a graphic design term. Um, it will make sense the more you use it. And I will, again, um, be explaining it. I've also posted uh, what bleed is in the graphic design in the graphic resources on Blackboard and uh, it will be posted in uh, class two's handouts as well. So we're gonna set the bleed just by clicking this top arrow. You can do it in a number of ways but we're gonna set it by just clicking up. So 0.125 and you see it goes across all of the fields there. That's because this button here was selected, the link button. That means you can see the note that comes up, make all settings the same. That makes things a little easier for things like margins and bleed when you want them all to be equal. So margins, they happen in the page, within the bounds of the page itself. The bleed is a guide that will be outside of the page, and we'll see that when we create our document. We're not going to worry about slug. You will likely never have to worry about that. It's print production details. If any of you get to the point where slug is a concern, you'll be well beyond uh, where we're at now, and you'll have um, learned and understood what you need to in order to take any value from that. So never worry about that. Typically, you're going to, of course, be worrying about your document size and the number of pages, um, the margins, and the bleed. I want to make one quick note here while we're in here. Facing pages, we turned that off. And make sure, please, that you turn that off. In anything that we work on in our class, you will be turning facing pages off. However, what that uh, is um, pertaining to is when, for example, if you're working on a magazine, a magazine is a book in uh, relative terms. It has pages that close facing one another. So that's what facing pages is. So if we had a multi-page document, we would turn facing pages on so that we knew where the pages would land in juxtaposition to one another. If you want to ever try and see what that means, uh, you can make a document that's 12 pages long, turn facing pages off or on, and you will see in your pages panel that we'll see in a bit um, how the documents land. So please, for our purposes, you'll typically have that turned off. Okay, 
So we're going to say create. Now this is our document. And always remember, when you make a new document, the first thing you want to do is save that document. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. Now, we're just working on a tutorial document, but that's okay. I do Tutorial 1. And when we save, you'll see the .indd. It's good to have that extension turned on. So if in your window, if it, you have hide extension selected, you want to make sure that's deselected so that the INDD is showing. And format, you're always going to be choosing InDesign. I'm not going to explain these at the moment. I will explain IDML down the road. However, just InDesign 2020 document. And if you're running another version of InDesign, it will indicate that there. However, this is just a plain InDesign document. And then you want to just save that to um, wherever you need to save something. So you have a folder, have a specific folder that you want to be saving things to, uh, your um, classwork. And then when you save, that'll be it. It saves as the INDD. Now, often when we're working on projects in class and I'm going around, I'll notice that some students have, uh, it still says untitled.indd. That's an indication that hasn't been saved yet. So, and you know, it's easy to work on a file for three hours and realize you haven't saved it. Um, so definitely save once you've opened your document, but please try to make it a habit of saving as you go, as you work. So anytime you, you perform a function, go to File and Save. We've already saved this one, so we haven't done anything. But if you do something, you'll see Save. So if I just make a square here, I've done something. I would do Save or even better, Command-S. If you're on a uh, PC, that command would be um, control S. So my habit, it's, it's a habit because I learned the hard way many years ago. Anytime I do something, I just do command S and my, my thumb actually rests down on those lower keys. Um, with these programs, you're typically always using both hands, one on the mouse, one on the keyboard. Now, if you are using a laptop, um, it's a little different, but you will be using, even in that case, two hands, one on the mouse pad, one on the lower, typically the lower left keys of the keyboard. So that's document set up. Make sure you've saved it. And then uh, we'll move on to um, the next part.